Well, they're certainly manned up. There's not many free Waratahs players here that I was look. Clark's not got a great number of options to look upfield, so he's going to have to kick to a contest. He's going to go a bit Pick short, though. He's picked someone out. That's Best. Best just right foot looking for this uh, Brody Carroll, the skipper. Knocked away from him. Off they go again. This time it's through Braun. Braun picks out his teammate. So Driffin. Driffin in short. Torpedo sort of a kick in. Clark got it hands once, but then didn't have any other way to get rid of it. Handball on the ground, still loose. Numbers there, pure numbers there, and there's a hold off the ball, and it's going to go to Centrals again. A Bankers. Well, this is well within A Bankers' range. And it's that type of um, play from the skipper that actually always makes him so dangerous. Puts his head over the ball. And he'd be pretty comfortable on this ground. He would have played a few games here at TAO Stadium as he lines this one up. So he's going to probably kick from about 45, you would think. Just a little skip. Sets it up. Will the wind bring it back? Gave it enough. And it's through for another point. What do you think so far, Kieran, in terms of the way the Central Australians are locking that ball in their forward 50? Yeah, I think um, they're doing pretty well. I think they might need to put a bit of work into Brody Carroll. It seems he's been everywhere early. He has. He's given his teammates an option. It's loose on the ground, though. It's about 55 out. Tackled without the ball. In fact, he's been pinged with it. Play on. Advantage is paid. It's going up forward. Oh, a bit of a nudge out there. And a yeah. push has been paid. Free kick found. And not in a great spot as far as Waratah's concerned, but it's Woodbury. Well picked up there, Ashley. He was nudged off the ball then. He was the only one going for the mark and uh, just got a little bit of a shove. The umpire picked it up straight away. Well, interestingly enough, so far, that uh, centre spine for the Centralians proving to be a headache. Woodbury, Wiley, Anchors. They're the ones that are actually causing some of the headaches early. What's he going to do here, Woodbury, do you think, Kieran? He's going to have to kick around the corner. I reckon check side. Yep. Well, he's, he's gone the check side and through for a point. So they've got three straight points. Trail by three. They've only been going seven minutes. Now, there's no time on in this, uh, in this game. So 20-minute quarters, no time on. So missing opportunities like that will hurt in the long run if they don't start to get a couple with straight 20-minute quarters. Ball goes out of bounds. Well, it's a pretty good field position as far as Central Australia is concerned. And uh, he's got to do the work now to keep it locked in. They've certainly put the pressure on Tars after that early break. Askew got his hands on it. Quick hands. Cree. Trying to bounce through. Can't get anywhere. Brought to ground. Running it through the middle. Hurried kick in the end. Good chase. Oh, coming through with good body there was, was uh, Wiley. Well, brought to ground was a ratter. Couldn't quite get it away. Well, good physical contest early on. Oh, just coming straight over the top there was Kenner. Handball out to Anchors with a right foot snap. Just turned at the last moment there. Looked all sort of was going to be a goal. It just spun around as he uh, just caught it with his uh, right foot there. Well, the breeze is actually favouring that airport end. I wonder if it just got taken there. It's a bit of a blustery breeze. Before when he took that free kick, the breeze just stopped there for a second. All those flags on the, uh, the opposite side of the ground just went down and uh, it didn't come back for him. On that one, you're right, the breeze did get hold of it. Well, they've gone to four points, so they're really hammering their goals. They just can't get a score on the board. Look out when they do. Spence. Clark. Clark can't get clean possession. Oh. Just coming through again. Polson there. Young, Polson. Young kid, Polson. Campbell. In the middle, just a chip over the top. Good vision from him. Picks out Driffin. Driffin spoils it, knocks it forward. 
push in the back. Driffin will end up with a free kick. Head over the ball. Morris not too sure. He gives it off to Campbell. Campbell. He's got anchors on the lead. He's got Woodbury at the back. Anchors, though, brings it to ground. Can it stay in? No. We'll go out of bounds. Central Australia have done really well hunting in packs right from the word go. They had a couple of minutes to start of the game there where Waratah got away and, of course, got that goal. But the rest of the time, Waratah's not had much time with the ball at all. Every time they've gone near it, there's a, a couple of central guys around them. So running into the breeze, do you think, uh, just after this throwing, it comes in. Kenner, handball out. Paulson again, overruns it. Campbell dodges one, then eventually puts it on the boot towards the goal square, but there's no one there. They spoil each other, the Tars players, almost. Spence is the one that held on to it. Now he goes out to his skipper, Carroll. Carroll just sends it up the line, picks out Kenner. Samuel Kenner over the top. This is young Kerenua. Little quick, short pass, finds Carroll. Barely goes the 15, but it gets there in the end. Back in board. Booth can play on. He's got two. This is a better build-up from Waratahs. Just keeping control as Morris. Morris is told to play on now. Looking for Askew. Punched away from him. Hands and knees. And they'll run it out comfortably through. I thought through low. Struggles to keep it in. Big hip and shoulder there. The ball's Ooh. gone out of bounds. So do you think they have to run that ball into this breeze? Because it is it is quite strong, Kieran. Yeah, it looks like the message seems to be keep possession. Lower the eyes, chip around where Alice brings more of a surge footy, getting it forward. And just getting as much distance as they can. Ball thrown in, Kenner. Got second time. Morris tries to beat, fend off one. He can't. He's picked up there by Coffey. Just turning around the corner there was Alice. Picked up by Clark. Clark can go short, but he might have made it a little bit hard for Cree. Handball over the top. Now it's raced away there. Oh, great tackle. Cree, great tackle and run down. Well, you've got to give it to the uh, Central Australians. They are actually keeping their opponent honest and kind and Kenny there with a good rundown tackle. Now he's found out a teammate in Braun who's got space on this grandstand side. He can hurry it up and put on the kick, but... It's Waratahs, and there's Paulson dropping back. Uh, sorry, Thornton, I should say. Three to one then, Paulson. unfortunately, for the Waratah, uh, for um, Centrals. They had three Waratah players there and very little kick to down that line. No, I suppose there's one way to look at it is that uh, Central Australians really worked hard to get behind the ball then to defend, and they did get it forward. Didn't have anything. It's now in the hands of Morris. He doesn't have anyone on the mark, but he doesn't take off. Goes in short, picks out Kenner. Galea, loose into a contest, wrapped up and brought to ground there, his coffee. Ball will be thrown up again. TO ground in excellent condition today, it looks really great out there at the moment and uh, that little bit of shade will be good for the guys but there's not much of it out there. All right, 13 minutes gone, just two points to difference here. The Centralians yet to score a goal, but it's going to go to Waratahs with a high tackle in that first one. So Dom Booth just sends it long. Karanua was there, got two hands on it, took the mark. Yeah, took the mark. I thought he got interfered with anyway. He's going to play on and just go around the shoulder. Have they got their second? I think yes, he has. has. Well, I think that was Dwayne Karanua. That's and has put that through. It was a great goal. That's the difference that the, so far Waratah have taken their two opportunities pretty easily. And uh, Central's had a couple. I've only got four points on the board. So it's two goals straight, 12 to four points. That was very much against the run of play. Yeah, I think that was... No, nah, is that the Karen who the kick five in the 18th grand final? Yeah, I think it yeah, might so. have been. He was, yeah, there was there were certainly both superstars on the day, to quote Ryan Ayres. Future star coming coming up for the Tars there. Yeah, he looked pretty comfortable there, didn't he? As soon as he turned, he knew what he wanted to do. Well, I consider that against the run of the play because the Centralians actually uh, had bottled that ball up inside their forward 50 for a good five or six minutes. 
Miles one's out there and there comes Deke, uh, Braun again. Long right foot kick looking for Woodbury. It's punched away from him. It's going to come into the hands, I would hope, into Afat. Afat, Afat puts it on the boot. It's going to that drop short and will land in the hands of Spence. Tom Spence goes out wide and he's got a runner right out wide, which is Cree. Cree has space on the 50 metre paint, goes back in board, picks out his teammate Best. Best goes to that scoreboard side and he's got Nick Hoare. Hoare, now they've got space to run it away and it's Embaskado or Blitner. Karen Newitt slips at the crucial stage. Soccer's off the ground, got held. Umpire right on the spot. Probably back him from here. Well, if he uh, if he can kick him around the corner from four, uh, 35 out, you'd have to give him a fair show. What's the secret to kicking goals from that corner, Kieran? I know you're a defender. Well, is, he, is he a left foot or right foot? He's got, looks like he's going for the left foot snap. Well, let's see what he does. He's certainly given it enough air up. It's gone right across the front. It's going to be punched away. They're going to get out of this, I think, the Centralians. It uh, was picked up there. It's been marked by Savelos. Punched away, though, by Gaynor. So Savelos has had it. They're just going to run it out, I think, the Centralians. It's going to have to kick long up to a contest in front of the grandstand. Ball loose on the ground. Picked up, handball out. Damon, hands and knees, they're trying to keep it in, but the ball goes out. Well, they had opened, they opened it up there, Waratahs on that far side. There's, I suppose, the, uh, the space of this oval that they would be used to and give them something to run onto. Can it? Put on there by Close. Contest. Ah, fat. Handball though. Damon couldn't get clean hands away and he got pinged holding the ball. It was quick there. Aran. And Clark just sends it up. Oh. Kenner with a handball. Uh, took the great mark, then handballed it. Not great in terms of uh, end efficiency. Cree with a diving handball. Centralians have got the numbers around it. They're going to come out with it, I think. They do. Hurry, kick away. It's going to bounce, though. And it's going to bounce into the hands of James Arata. Arata's got a lead out wide, which is best. Best can give it over the top. This is the other... This is his teammate in uh, Blitner. Blitner goes at goals and puts it through. Just been that one percent different there. When Waratah have got the ball, they just look a lot more confident on the ball. You can't stop it the way Central or can't uh, hurt the way Central is playing. They're certainly having a red hot go. They just have a little bit of finish there at the moment, like that one. Well, it's actually the under two of their under 18s have been their goal scorers. Yeah. Although um, I see the Blitners made his men's Premier League debut with Waratahs last year, but they're, uh, it's their uh, teenagers that are leading the way, Kieran. Yeah, that's just the X factor. They just seem too quick at the moment for the Caffle defenders. Might have to mix something up down there. Positional change, maybe. Well, they're certainly doing enough in defence, I would have thought, the, uh, the Centralians, but they just can't seem to get a break. They're certainly getting enough numbers behind the ball and not surging forward once they have got it. They just need that all-important goal, the first one that they need. Bunched out there by Kenner again, who's been a difference when he's come into the ruck. Holding the ball paid there. So it'll be Morris that gets the kick away so they can go forward again. Waratahs. Cree over his head, bouncing. Abbott. Abbott chopped it off. Couldn't get control and it's gone out of bounds. Hamish Galea just coming on for Waratah. They've just done a swap. It's just under over a minute to go in the first quarter. Yeah, Miles got his hands on it first. Yeah. A bank is dodges one and then puts it on the boot. He's got to send it up to centre wing. Clark will take on Wiley. Wiley taps it forward. He's got three to beat, two to beat in the end. Clark is keeping him under pressure. Now get away. 
with it. Back into the middle. Got the runners off the back, off the half back line here. There's McCormick over the top. So now they've got themselves an overlap and space. Spence has come all the way down from the half back line. He's put it out in front of Best. Dodgers one, can't break the tackle. Hurried handball one handed and a free Great kick tackle. will be paid. Yeah. Was a good tackle. Tried to spin out of trouble, ended up spinning into it. Goes back in board. And the siren sounds to end the first term. You're watching the reigning TAO Entifel Premiers War Waratah taking on the Central Australian Football League live from TAO Stadium. We'll be back with you shortly with the second quarter. All right, friends, that's the first quarter of our curtain razor done. The Tars are leading three goals, 18. Caffel there with four behinds on four. Definitely Tars in a bit of that controlling position at the moment. Uh, but anything can happen. It is football. So make sure that if you're going for anyone here, you make some noise for them, Darwin. There might be a few of us here, but we can make a lot of noise. Make sure that everyone's having a good time for this curtain razor. That is going to be the lead in for our AFL game starting tonight. Gold Coast Suns at their home away from home here in Darwin on TIO, taking on the Adelaide Crows. A bunch of tickets have been sold. It's going to be a massive, massive atmosphere tonight for that AFL game. Pretty exciting here, having the curtain raiser with the boys all the way from Alice Springs coming up on their representative side and Tars, this year's premiers, looking very, very, very strong in that first quarter. Hope you got somebody there to cheer on, mates. Make sure you get some drinks, make sure you keep hydrated. And we've got a couple of activations happening here during the quarter time. Um, very shortly, we're gonna get into it. I reckon we're gonna jump straight in. Palmerston Mini Golf. Uh, did you know Palmerston's getting a mini golf course? For my friends out there, you guys are as excited about this as I am. Mini golf south of the Berrima line. I'm absolutely pumped. And to celebrate, we're gonna have a bit of a mini golf competition. I got a couple of people from in the audience here. Uh, Andrew and Liam, which one's which? Who of you? I'm Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, I'm Andrew. All right, hey, Andrew, and you're Liam? Yeah, yeah. Right, great. Excellent. Uh, boys, are you here watching anyone in particular? Uh, yeah, we got uh, Liam's brother, Jack. He's over there somewhere. Hey, Jack. <laughs> Shout out to Jack, your brother. Is he, is he playing all right so far? Yeah, so far, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Got any feedback for him? I mean, like, you obviously get to coach him. Your siblings, that's part of it. Any feedback? No, nah, he's the older brother. He knows what to do. <laughs> Never argue with an older sibling. As an older sister, I get it. All right, so what's going on here? You're going to have a go at the putt-putt. We are celebrating uh, the brand new Palmerston mini golf competition that's set up. So basically, have a go. If you get a hole in one, you win. But I guess we're going to go until somebody sings a hole, boys. So let's see how we go with this.
Back for the second half with the reigning TIO NDFL Premier's Waratah taking on the Central Australian Football League side. Uh, good first quarter there for um, Waratah. Ash, your thought, thoughts? Well, I thought Central Australia, I mean, it's 14 points the difference, three straight goals plays four points, but I thought that uh, Centralians were a bit unlucky there for about five or six minutes. They did all the hard work, kicked the ball in their forward 50, couldn't buy a goal, um, had four, four scoring shots. And in fact, they've had more scoring shots than Waratahs. But Waratahs, when they did get it forward, it's a little bit better system, and especially through that midfield, Kieran. Yeah, the usual suspects for Waratahs showing up, Carroll, Morris, and then also the younger boys coming through, um, which is good signs for Ryan Ayres. Uh, Centrals did hunt in packs, though, right through that quarter. They uh, got a bit behind in the first couple of minutes, but they've certainly held in pack. They just can't get that finish in there when they've gone in their side, their 50. They've gone in a number of times. They've got four points on the board, but I reckon they've gone in about eight times, and they just lacking that just set moment of getting it through there, Kieran. Yeah, they just got to finish. I think just probably be a bit more clean. Um, hopefully Matty Cam will pop up for one or two in this quarter and get the boys going. Well, what was uh, good for, as far as Waratahs was concerned is that they're, they're out of their three goal scorers, and Brody Carroll scored the first goal, Dwayne Karanua and uh, Xavier Blitner have got the other two, uh, one each, but uh, they're both sort of teenagers under under 20 and uh, Kiranur, I think, did you say kick five in the under-18s grand final? So they're able to be a little bit more dynamic up forward. And it's not to say anything about the, the, the Caffles forward structure, but um, they're coming up a, against a, a lot more experienced defenders back there. Will Clark's having uh, having a day out. He's getting plenty of kicks for um, Waratahs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you said, none of the premiership defenders are out, so he's, he's some, you know, stand up. He's playing his role well. It's probably a two-goal breeze for the rider screen at the moment. It's getting a bit stronger as well. Well, they both Ruckman miss at miles, though, and it's going to come out, though, to, to Caffel. A-Bankers runs a quota and then puts it on the boot right foot. Campbell knocks it forward. Picked up there. Quick hands is going to come back to Campbell. Campbell dodges one way, then the other. Left foot sets it up high, waiting for it to drop back, but it's going to be marked there on the line by Luke Arant. And Waratahs, last line of defence, stands tall. Well, that was an encouraging start by the Centralian straight out of the middle. Well, oh, Woodbury there almost chopped off and intercepted the pass. It's going to come back through Best, though, with the quick hands. Waratahs will get it up onto centre wing. Good pressure and then punched away from him by Cole. Tarzo on the burst. Carroll, hands. Oh, One-handed handball from Blitner. Play on is the call, wrapped up in the tackle. Umpire Port says, give it to me. I'm going to ball it up. Good defence there by Caffel. Jackson Cole, they call him the Golden Fist back in Alice Springs. So. Well, that was uh, that was part of the lock up there. Did very well. Morris forces another ball up. Askew comes in. Miles, though, punches it forward. Can't get clean hands. Dodge around, though, is Morris. Morris on the left foot looking for um, Kenner. Can't get it. Again, handball away, Cole. Really put under pressure the Caffel defenders. Cole then pushed in the back and will get a free kick as a consequence. Bit of frustration there from Nick Hoare. And Jackson Cole will go back and have the shot. Uh, sorry, go back and take the kick. A pretty good defender if he had a shot from back there. Goes across the face. Pick out Gaynor. Yeah. Down the line here for him if he wants it. To Laporta. Wiley picks it up one bounce. Back to Laporta running on. Now they've got to hurry it up. They can get it on again. That was Alice. Good handball. Cross to Kenny. He just overcooks the kick, I think. Coffee. And they will get it out. Now they've got to slide across the to the scoreboard side. Hold the kick up. They've got numbers here. Best presented himself. Best just plays on. Punched away again by Cole. Oh, nice spin and turn out of the trouble there was Coffey. Coffey with it, kick to his teammate. Alice tries to step around one and does. And a good lead there. Woodbury's a long way from home though. Puts it over the top, the full forward. There's Anchors with a quick hand. Play on is the call. There are a chance here if Campbell can get clean possession. He can't. Mind you, the handball was at his boot laces. He did well to get a hand on it. 
Just those little moves each time by Central. They're just not getting that final nice touch just to get through. They had a couple of opportunities then. Good rebound, a little bit of good spread there as Woodby tries to go up against his opponent. Oh, just with body and press, and the whistle is gone. Hit the post, but it's going to come back, I think. Now, there's a free kick. I suspect it's going to go to... Wiley. It's going to go to Wiley, who I think got held off the ball. Did he? No. He actually got uh, interfered with while he was having that shot. So he'll go back and have a deliberate shot at goal. And this, for their first goal, first genuine six-pointer, if he can put this through... Then the margin will be will go down to eight points. So he's going to kick from about 35 out. Right foot sits it up, lovely goal umpire, and he's hit the post. Hit the well, who does yeah. that? <laughs> who hits the post twice in consecutive shots a minute apart? <laughs> if you asked him to do it, he couldn't do it. <laughs> But unlucky there, though. They just, just need that one goal, though, I think, Centrals, and they might get a bit of a run on. We did say that fitness might come and show in the second half, so they just need to score soon. Well, we're starting to see the fumbles there as Woodbury gets it. Handball over the top. Campbell keeps his feet, uses his body well, goes underground. Good work. Oh, coming through as Anchors with a right foot snap at goal. That's a skipper's goal. It's the one they needed. Well, what did you think of that one, Kieran? Class, absolute class there. You seen can't him, defend against that, can you? Seen him do that about 100 times for Thunder and in the NTFL, so, yeah, saw that one coming. You can't actually defend against that when you're a defender. No, nah, I've had to play on him multiple times, and uh, he's, yeah, he got the better of me on many occasions, so he's a very good player. Matty Campbell then was very clever as well because not only to keep his feet, use his body, and then handballed underground, but it was good over the top. So three goals straight to Waratah, one goal five to Centrals. So a seven-point lead at the moment. Well, good signs here, and I think that uh, what we started to see there is a few fumbles, and there was a fumble there as a short kick, not great. Carroll couldn't get it on the one bounce, and it was in a terrible position. So now forward, is, it's one out there by Askew. Caffel can pick it up. Askew got taken high, let go, play on is the call. Knocked away from Carroll with a quick hand back. Here they go. Or oh, Carroll's got it. Steps around one. Looking for the lead of, Pen of Kenner. Bouncing. Kicking around the corner there. Was that Polson? I think he's kicked it. Best. Was it best? Well, he kicked around the corner. Right foot. Straight through. Quick answer there for, for Waratah. Another one of their gun under 18 boys coming through as seniors. Well... That means three of their goal scorers are from their under-18s. Ryan Ayres would be distinctly happy about that. Now, what I was saying before is I just started to know a few skill er notice a few skill errors at the six-minute mark here from Waratahs. I'm wondering if we're going to see more of that as we get further into this game. Given that they haven't played for uh, at least six or eight weeks. Ask you. Wins out. Oh, it's just picked off there by Morris. Hall was the flyer and a high tackle in the contest and Hall will go back and have a shot at goal. He just got taken high in that. No one back on the line for Waratah, so pretty comf confident he's going to make this one. Well, he's got a bit of a breeze behind him, and that's really going to be what helps it across the line. It had plenty of distance. Sorry about that. Certainly made it. So Hall gets his first, and Waratah's get their fifth. Yes, yeah, so the Central's got one, and uh, Waratah's come back with two quick goals. Kick five straight now, F five goals, 30 points to one goal, five, 11. And uh, as you said, there was a couple of little fumbles there earlier on a couple of minutes ago from Waratah, but uh, certainly settled down with those two quick goals. Well, it took four straight points before the Caffel can get on the board. Five straight points, so let's hope that they don't rue that late in the game. Uh, Fat's gone in there into the ruck. Askew just runs it over with one. 
Cree couldn't quite get handball, handballs underground to Harcher. Harcher taken away with it. Kenny, the teammate now, they can set it up. Can they run it? They can. Savelos. He goes out wide. Campbell's there. Woodbury went over the back. It's going to bounce clear, though. Paulson with a handball onto a teammate. Kieran Ewer spins into trouble, then gets out of it. Oh, but it's Oof. chopped off there. And that's Braun. Braun goes in short. Not far enough. Play on is the call. Is that anchors on the ground there? I think it is. Yeah, it is. Yep. Asking the question about the distance. And the distance wasn't far enough, according to umpire de Graff. So it'll be thrown up. Woodbury tapped over the top. Handball again. Polson stepping back into trouble. Morris, quick hands out. Carroll. Great footy by Waratahs there. Yeah, yeah clean skills. Karen has come a long way up again. Abbott. He's got to go in short. Wiley thought he had control. Picked up by Abbott. Good. Beautifully scooped one-handed. Goes to centre half forward. It's going to go over the top though. Clark oversteps it. Now there's trouble. Waratah's defenders. Anchors came in to help. It's picked up though by Lowe. Lowe's gone towards goal and the bounce. Woodbury thought it might get a right turn and it didn't. How good was the kick up? A pick up by Abbott. Good pick up there. They're just dropping down just as they get inside their 50 though, Central Australia. Um, it was a pretty casual kick there by Lowe, but uh, unfortunately it didn't go through the middle. Clark. He's gone right out of the grandstand side. Campbell's there. So too is his teammate Savelos. Overruns it though. And the boundary is the Waratahs defender's friend. Umpire waiting for the Ruckman to get in position. Well, this forward press, Kieran, you'd want to score from this, wouldn't you? Every time, or as many times as you possibly can. They're just not getting that chance, are they? Yeah, I'd love to see how many forward entries Central Australia had for their scores compared to Waratahs, who seem to be scoring every time they're going in. Yeah, it's a bit like that, Kieran, isn't it? And they're, and they're also looking very classy when they go in Waratah, pretty confident that they're going to score a goal, whereas it's very scrambly football for Central Australia every time they've gone forward. Well, the ball movement that we just saw by Waratahs out was was as good as you will see. It's handball very good there again from Savelos. Can't get it away and was pinged holding the ball though. And it's Bradley Turner. Go up. Askew just came through and took out an opponent in front of him and that coffee. Was that coffee? So, yeah. yeah, very courageous. He's actually gonna get the kick, I would have thought. He's got to go back. He's holding his hand. But Coffey will go back and take the kick. Probably heard those big footsteps too, Kieran. Sam, Sam Askew, I'm not sure. Did he, did he play last season? I think he might have played in the seconds, but Kine and Kenny. Yeah, and coming across was Nick Hoare to take the mark. Hoare, short. They're out here if he's quick. Jai McHenry plays on. Anchors kept him under pressure. Askew sort of had a go at it, couldn't quite get it. Picked up and then dodged once. Now he's in trouble. Oh, there's a great rundown there by Dwayne Karanua. And then there's an equally better one from Abe Anchors. And Kine and Kenny went for it, but it was uh, Dwayne Karanua that got him. And then they thought they were away, Waratahs. Anchors, though, was up to it. And the skipper sets it up through Maida. Maida gives it over to Lowe. Arakai Lowe. He goes out wide again. Jaden Dick, this is Westy's captain in Alice Springs. Yeah, Dick goes forward. Put under pressure. Hello. Caffel might keep this in moving forward again. Ball's gone out of bounds. James Arata did his best. They kept pressing. For a little while there, um, Central Australia had one extra man in the 50. I don't know what, where the uh, Waratah guy dropped off to, but there's certainly an extra guy running around. They just couldn't get the ball across to him. Kenner just hands over the top. 
It's not coming out of there anytime soon. Well, five straight goals, 30 plays, one goal, six, 12. Just seven scoring shots from the from Caffel, the representative side, to five. Cannot convert cleanly. The kick goes long and high. Hawes in there for Waratahs. So too is Coffey and the boundary line. And the ball will be thrown in just to the left of what was the old scoreboard here at TIO Stadium. Far side. Bree's still really strong to the right of screen. Pretty good playing conditions though. In terms of the temperature, Breeze is keeping it cool. Now they've got a runner. Anchors, the skipper. Goes in short, picks out a teammate, Damon. Eli Damon just sends it up, looking across there. Savelos with good hip and shoulder. Right foot, tries to drag it around. Woodbury tries to set himself off hands. Picked up there. I didn't see who quite got it there, but it's going to be marked anyway by Arant. Luke Arant. He sends it out back wide to where it came from. Morris on the outside there. And he goes back in board. Picks out Booth. Dom Booth. Hoare off his hands. Best. Already kicked a great goal today. Here they go. Stepping around them was Barty. Hurried sort of a kick. Oh, Damon couldn't quite get two hands on it. It's going to be socket off the ground. Best is going to lead the foot race. He gets an awkward bounce, though. Morris has had to come in to assist. Morris with a left foot kick lead looking for Askew. Askew takes a good mark. Two bites of it. He's got control. Plays on quickly. He's got Hoare inside in the middle corridor. Balks once, then goes on to his right. It's going to be too short. Play on is the call. Brody Carroll stood up and waited for it. And luckily for him, the umpires ruled no prior. It wouldn't have gone 15. Good call by the umpire. Askew will go into the ruck. Oh, picked up and running through. Was that... Was that Barty? That uh, McHenry? We'll just push that to the right. That's the second time, though, today, today that the umpires have uh, stopped a short kick inside of 50. One for Centrals and one for... Waratah and both decisions, you'd have to say, were absolutely correct. Yeah, John McHenry it was that had that shot at goal. Well, that's the first point for the day for Waratahs. Five goals, one. Plays one goal, six. They just run it out. Be careful. Off hands. That was Kenner. Clark. And out of bounds it goes. Again, has proven to be quite a handful when he's gone into the ruck. Miles. He gets to the front position. Uh, Wiley's the one that's got to guide it out of bounds. Only three minutes away from half time. Five goals, one thirty-one to one goal, six twelve. Central would love to get one now and take this one back forward. Big punch away from Kenner. Oh, big tackle there on Jaden Dick by Brody Carroll. Loose interfered with I thought was Blightner, and he was. He's going to get the kick away, and he has very quickly. They're going to try and get one more score, and if they can, comes back to Carroll. Carroll's got a runner. Went behind him, unfortunately. He's still got Carroll there if he wants him. Little chip over the top. He's found a teammate, and he has. It's Don't. Addison Don't. Addison Don't goes short. Picked up, though. It is by McHenry. And it fell short and through for a point. 
They wanted out of this danger zone in the last minute or two. Made up. A couple of Westies teammates linking up there. Sammy Mader, Jaden Dick. He hasn't really got much to look forward to. He's definitely kicking to a contest, but that's a good mark there. Good, solid, contested mark. Embuscado. And he goes in board, picks out another teammate. Again, it's the youngsters combining that are doing it for Waratahs as don't. Cross to Blitner. Blitner gets slung and dragged off the ball. Solid tackle there. Dylan Ellis, he's the one that needs probably about himself more in the game. They just can't seem to get away. The Waratahs have got numbers, as you say, Nick, around the ball. Yeah, they're just not getting any clean touch Central Australia. They had a couple of ones early in the first quarter, but since then it's just been rush, rush, rush. Waratah's not giving them any room, and as you said, it's the youngsters from Waratah that are doing all the running. It's been very impressive. And they go again. Morris on the end of a handball. Askew gets it punched away from him. Let's see if they can build something from here. Careful, but they can't. It's turned over in the midfield. Now it's going to come wide again, and again it's going to end up in Embuscado. Been a bit busy in the last few minutes or so. Over the top there is Cree. And the ball, I think, will go out. It's gone out of bounds. We're throwing up. We might just make it back in as we head towards the dying seconds of this second term and, and the dying seconds of the first half. Look for Brody Carroll on the fly here. Kenner got it away. Hurried McHenry couldn't get it. Morris steps once, steps twice, then gets a kick away. Hawes set himself. Askew comes through. Karanua. Well, Karanua gets his second. Straight off the hands, right on the siren of halftime. Now, my first multiple goal scorer of the game. Karanua's got two. Brody Carroll's got one. Nick Horn's got one. Xavier Blinter and uh, Cooper Best, all scorers for Waratah. And only single goal scorer, of course, for Central Australia. Abraham Akers got one. A pretty good snap, but that's the only goal they've got of the game. As we go into halftime, six goals, 238 to one goal, 612. You're watching the reigning TAO NTFL Premier's Waratah taking on Central Australian Football League side. Here from TAO Stadium, we'll be back with you in the second half shortly.
The reigning TAO NDFL Prem is Waratah taking on the Central Australian Football League site here you know, in TAO Stadium in Darwin on beautiful Larrakia country. Big half of football there for Waratah. Kieran, what changes though can Central Australia make? I'd love to see uh, Dylan Alice, Braden Wiley spend a bit more time in the midfield. I think they've got to be the X factor in speed, break away from stoppages. Yeah, they need that X factor, don't they? At the moment, it's the difference between the two sides because it's their, the Waratahs' younger guns that are actually proving the difference. They've actually scored one, two, three, four of their goals so far out of the six. Waratah kicked the first goal of the game and then Central locked it in the forward 50 for ages and ages and only picked walked away with five points and we thought, well, that could hurt them. And then Waratah then went bang, bang, bang and here we are at the moment. They've kicked one goal. Um, Adrian Akers kicked one a snap over his shoulder. But apart from that, it, they're just missing that ball just as it goes into the 50. Yeah, it is. They haven't got anyone that can actually convert those chances. They're doing all the hard work to get it there. But 77 days since Waratah played football, the season ended, and of course, the central side of round six of their season. So fitness, we thought, might play into it. Let's see what happens in the second half. Askew just won it out easy. Miles didn't compete in the end for the Caffel. Bounced away. They're going to run it, though, and it's going to be picked up by Kine and Kenny. Kenny can give it over the top. Turner. And Turner, Bra Bradley Turner with a short but into Woodbury. Woodbury with a handball back inside to turn. Turner couldn't get it cleanly. Bounce there and go out of bounds. Much better start from Caffel. But that's been basically what they've been doing for all day, though. They get that ball in the 50. They just finish that final little touch there. I mean, the, the forward there should have gone full, more centre of the goal, give him an opportunity, because even if he marked that, he was on a real tight angle. No, but the best part about that is Woodbury put himself in front. Here we go. Here we Off go. hands. Right foot snap at goal. Anchors. And he's missed it. Has put it through for a point. No, but the good thing about Woodbury then, Kieran, we're talking about it off air, is I wanted to see him lead at the ball. And he did that. Didn't wait for it. As Clark, Will Clark brings it back in. Hall, long way down. Gives it off to a teammate, Luca Rant. So they work it out that far side. He can come back in board. He's got James Arata there if he wants him. He ignores him. Clark as well. And goes in and picks out Cree, I think it is. Thomas Cree, one of the Premiership players in this Waratah side. Clark presented himself there. They're just giving it time. He's got best up there if he wants him, and he doesn't. It's going to go in instead short to Morris. So men's Premier League Premiership players just combining. Loose on the ground. They can run it, get it back here through Kappa with a turnover. Alice with quick hands. Handball back inside. Here they go. Braun, Deacon Braun from outside 50, loads it up. Just drifts it off to the right. Had anchors there all by himself. Yeah, he did, didn't he? He's probably hoping that that breeze, which has suddenly just dropped off, was going to help it bring it round. It hasn't. So they're going to restart this. Just waiting. Being told to get a move on, and he does. Brings it out to the commentary side, grandstand side. Carroll, pause in there. Handball over the top. Braun again, hurried handball back. Wiley tries to beat off one. And a good mark and lead. Well, that's Kane Savellas, who's proven himself. He presented himself a few times in that second term and couldn't really get a break away. He's going to go back. In fact, it's not Savalas, it's Driffin. It was a good call out there from Driffin because another one of his other players was about to take the mark and he called him away from it and came across the pack and took it. Let's see what they can do. Let's see what Driffin can do. So Henley Driffin, big left foot. It's going to stay that way. And goes to the left again. So they've added two more points since half time. Three more points since half time. Looks like Matty Campbell's made the move to half-back as well. Bit of run and carry. Clark just goes in short. They're going to cut it off again. They've got the numbers. They've got options and leads. Oh, off hands, it's going to come over the back. 
Wiley's going to pick it up, steps back inside, can't quite get it away, dragged off the ball. Now it comes to Anchors with a right foot. Oh, oh and I think he's skimmed the post. All clear no, given. Well, you can see he's kicked a few goals on this ground. He just took his time then and just chipped it through. Did get close to the post, though, I must admit, but the goal umpire was right next to it and saw that it cleared there. And that's their second goal. He's got both of the four central, but uh, that looked a little bit better for him, Kieran. Yeah, I think he put that one in the book as soon as he got hands uh, hands in the footy. He's pretty accurate from that pocket. So it, was, it was good the way that they, uh, they forced to put the pressure on for the turnover. This is what they did in the uh, first quarter. They kept the ball locked in their forward 50, but just couldn't come away with any goals. They needed that one to break it and get this game. It's still not out of their control. A big half a footy to go for them, though. Miles and Askew back in the middle. Anchors has gone in there, standing Carroll. Good matchup. One out by Askew, but it's going to come to, Ca uh, to Anchors. Anchors with a hurried right foot kick. It's going to be a bounce. This is Savalos. Couldn't quite get clean possession. Dragged off it, let go. Picked up from outside, from inside the uh, 50 paint. Just goes out of bounds on the full. Hurry kick isn't going to stay in, I, w I don't think, and it's not. And it was Clark that put the lead up. So again, handling error, mistake. Just slightly opens the door for the Caffle side. Miles with a hand forward. Good. Is he going to be able to keep it in? He can. Handball back inside. Made up. Quick hands. Thought oh. was good. He just couldn't get it across. Yeah, Coffey did all the work then. And then the kick. Just let himself down and went out of bounds on the full. Nice pace on the board the moment, on the game at the moment by Central Australia. They're just going to uh, get a bit more time on it. Clark kicked very close to the man on the mark then. Cree couldn't get it cleanly. Arata, hurried handball. Contest, Cree can get it this time. He's going to get hassled by it though. Morris, he got dragged off the ball. Morris is going to get it. Advantage paid. Play on is the call. Leading it up, Hoare is out there on his own. Had one hand on it, couldn't get two. Comes back to Carroll. Brody Carroll with a left foot snap, can drag it across his body and put it through. That's Brody Carroll's second goal of the game. But they did a pretty, again, Waratah go forward and score a goal straight away, whereas uh, Central Australia have to chip away at the other bottom end. Only two goals for the match. And uh, Waratah just look a little bit more classy when they finish off. And the Waratah back six really uh, holding their own against a lot of pressure and then running away from their opponents. So 23 points in at the moment. The next goal will be very, very important for, for both sides, you would think. Uh, with a nice little buffer if Waratah get it and uh, Central, Central Australia desperately need the next goal. Miles and Sam Askew face off. One out by Askew, over the top of Cree. Picked up, though, I think, by Close. Close's handball is back. Miles with a hurried right foot kick, the ruck. It's going to bounce at centre-half forward. Here they go. Handball back inside. They're going to run it around here. Better build up by the Caffle. The leader is Savalos. Is it Savalos, or is that Driffin again? It's Driffin. He's pointing to the goals. So Henley Driffin. Pointing to those goals, likes his chances from there. In fact, he goes backwards and in and picks out Turner. Turner goes in short, but it's going to get chopped off. And it's Jai McHenry short, and his kick gets kicked off. This picked off this time by Turner. Turner goes in Who else? and finds Abe Ankers. Well, Turner had two opportunities there. He messed the first one up and got it brought back straight away and got, made the right decision the second time. Kicked Anchors is the multiple goal scorer of four Central Australia as he lines this one up for their third. And as I said, an important goal. You would think Central Australia needed to get this next one. So Abe Anchors has gone a long way back from the man on the mark there. Really going to measure this. I'm probably going to back him in. Kieran, you? I think he'll kick it. Anchors keeps it low and sharp and through the middle. Goal umpire didn't move then. So Anchors gets his third. 
The calf will get their third. So 27 points to 44. That was the goal they needed to get this, keep this game in, in close ties. Because we said, we think fitness is going to show a part as we get into the final stages of this game. They need to stay within striking distance, Central Australia do, and that certainly will help. So from here, Kieran, you still you still think they need to inject a little bit more into that midfield? Where's the where's the change got to come from Caffle to just keep this momentum going? Yeah, it looked like Bradley Turner's um, brought himself into the game a little bit. He's the um, captain of South down there. And then also Deacon Braun, he's uh, had a few touches in this early in this quarter. But uh, I think what a weapon it is when you can have your best player go forward and kick three. Uh, Fat with a big win over the top. Carroll, hip and shoulder. Uh, Fat coming through again with good body. Taps it out to his teammate Wiley. Wiley on the left foot. He's got Driffin. Oh, coming around there. The Caffle forward. He brought it back in board, did the right thing, but it was Morris who chopped it off. And Morris with a saver in the centre corridor. Puts it on the boot. Savellos got his hands on it though. It's going to be over the top. Carroll gets a handball behind him. He's got to double back to clean it up. Gets it. Now they can run it away. Tars go forward. Here we go. Danger man. And Karanua gets out judged and outmarked by Campbell. The experience. Campbell now brings it out to Kynan Kenny. He looks up and he's got a bit of space. He has a lead too. Yeah, and it's Damon. Eli Damon. Damon's got Woodbreeze. It's two on one. Oh, equal to it though. He's Spence. Wow, if that goes over the top to Woodbury, Tars are in all sorts of trouble. Spence just sets it up high. They spoil each other. Savalos came across the top. Loose out. Hall with a quick hands off to Clark. Stepped one way, then the other, and it's out, gone out of bounds, and that was Harcher. Costly turnover, potentially. In board. Just since the Caffle representative side now, his use of the football is much better as Damon presents himself again. So Eli Damon just plays on. Contest. Driffin. Oh, hurried. Great tackle from the youngster. Play on is the call. Clark. And McHenry has had to come down. So Jai McHenry. Not a lot to kick too forward, I mean, though. No. He's going to go straight down the line. Campbell's there. It's punched away. Punched on by Karanua. Harcher. Bounce of the ball. Kenny just weaves through the pack. Lovely play. Gives it over the top again. Bring it out, Jaden Dick. Jaden's looking for Woodbury. He's going to get a bounce. Bounce on, bounce on. And through for a point. Gee, I'm liking the pressure, Kieran. Yeah, great play by Connie Kenny there. Step out of traffic, get the ball forward. They send it out wide. Oh, oh one-handed, just plucked it out of the air. Waratah's flooding back all day here. And Robbie Barty. That was Wiley, that, oh, that was Anchors that actually just one-handed that out of the air. He's having a shot. So Robbie Barty's going to go back and have a shot from the 50. He'll probably kick, he'll have to kick from about, you would think he's going to, well, umpire's just moved a man on the mark. So he's probably going to have to kick from about 57, 58. He's clearly confident. Robbie Barty. Gee, he's giving it everything got, from got, there. That's not a bad look at kick. Oh, oh, oh. oh, how about that? Put that one down. There's a couple of local sides be chasing his number next season. That's a, the goal up, uh, the field up, I didn't make it easier for him. He pushed the guy about three metres forward to the 50, and he's gone back and got bang. Is that a Kieran Parnell kick from the defence? <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> hey? Robbie, Robbie Barty, um, I don't think he played last year in the Premiership, but he definitely played the year before. Hard-nosed midfielder. Backed himself straight away. Well, I loved it. And he actually might have had the breeze just over that, that shoulder because he has sat that up beautifully and, and turned, it's carried through. Turned the back straight away, so pretty confident. And there you go, end result goal. Well, now we're starting to see it's come back to a 10-point ball game after what was a 26-point differential at half time. 44 plays 34. We come away. Caffel, you just sense are starting to get... Some yeah. momentum oh, oh, coming through there. Quick hands. Here they go again in the lead. Anchors is there. Worried off it, though, by Arata. Now he's up again, Anchors. 
Handball. They're really putting pressure on those defenders. Carroll with quick hands. Gives it off to a running teammate in Don't. Don't's kick, though, is intercepted. Oh, that's a 50. Yeah, it is. Laporta. Yeah. Good call. And Laporta just got in the way. Or is it uh, Laporta's ended up with a 50? Laporta's ended up with a 50, but it was uh, the Waratahs player that just went across the line. Yeah, he knew he did that. He threw his arms up in the air to say it wasn't me, but there was no one else there. No, and this you would think he's going to be within range, especially after what we just saw a moment ago. Can he emulate Robbie Bartee, but from about 25 metres closer? Angle's the same. Not much angle to speak of. He just got to sit it up. Not a bad looking kick. And he's just pushed it off to the right. Well, four goals, 11.35. Margins now down to nine points. Seven goals, two. Plays 4-11. Nearly 15 minutes gone here. Five more minutes left in this third term. Will Clark takes a bounce to run it out. Then has a kick. And again, great mark there. Ah, uh, fat. Now it's back in board. This is Barty again. Decides not to have a shot this time. Instead, he picks out a player, hits him on the chest, and that's Kenny. Kenny goes in short, and it's Damon. Eli Damon. So he's going to go back, and you would think have a shot. But I wondered if fitness was going to play a part in the second half. You might be right. Eli Damon, a sharpshooter from Rovers Footy Club in Alice Springs. Well, he's also he's presented himself a fair bit in the last few minutes, giving them an option on this half forward. He's going to go back and have a shot. Is it going to come back around? No, but that breeze is the one that caught it. Just at the last minute, turned it. We had a good spot. So 16 scoring shots to, uh, to nine, but uh, four goals, 11. Doesn't help their cause. But it's eight points in at the moment. No. Oh. Kenner was taken high and he's going to get push in the back as well just for good measure. Play on advantage is called. Now they're putting them now they're putting the ball carrier under pressure. Campbell with a little over the top to Barty. Barty's got a runner out wide. He's just going to ignore him. Just go long. Woodbury has presented himself. It's going to fall short though. Chopped off by Carroll. Carroll in front of anchors. Waratah's teammates there. Carroll just plays on, looking for Kenner. Just plucks it out of the air in front of his opponent, Miles. Kenner over the top. Cree. Carroll's on the middle. He's moved himself all the way down. He's ignoring him. Clark is also. Cree's taking a little bit too long here to get the ball on, you think, Kieran? Certainly he didn't even look over to the right there to miss Carroll completely. So he's gone out towards the boundary line. And the interchange, and it's gone out of bounds. Definitely a game plan from Waratahs, just keep possession. It's definitely working. Yeah, the Caffle bench happy with that outcome. Mutual contest, good for them. Miles. Picked up. It's a touch ball. McHenry got a kick away. Harcher brought it down. No clean possession, though. And by Port was in. One out by Pe Kenner again. Picked up by Harcher. Punched away. Campbell versus Karanua. This is a good matchup, this. Youth versus experience. Campbell starting to dominate early. Got on top of his opponent. Now they've got a lead in anchors. Anchors with a solid mark, lead and grab. Some great pace out of the back line there from Central Australia. They took a clean grab and they went really well there, Kieran, didn't they? Yeah, Bradley Turner once again. So what's he going to do here, Kieran? Is he, he's looking like he's going to go back and have a shot. He's got the breeze. What do you think? I think he's backing himself here. Emulate Barty. Puts it up. It's going to fall well short and it's going to land in the hands of McHenry. Jai McHenry out on the lead. And there's the contest. It's punched away, though, from Thornton. They'd love one here late, Alice Springs. Wouldn't they? They need one. 
minute minute 15 to go in this quarter and they've done all the work so far clawed this back to an eight point ball game drops in short play on the call miles can't get rid of it still loose on the ground can something come from this lying on top of the ball umpire de Graff says give it to me Score late in this third quarter will help their cause, cause running into the final term. Quick hands over the top. Kick, Woodbury, can't clean it up. Clark woof, decides to go it alone and suddenly we're going to have a seven point margin with less than 30 seconds to go in this quarter. Didn't see that result happening in about 10 minute mark of this quarter where uh, Waratah got that goal. You thought, oh, they're in trouble here, said Trainer. But they've certainly come back and uh, seven points in it, as you said, with about 10 seconds or so to go with no time on in this, this match. Pushed out over the top. There was a big push there and it's going to go to the... Who's it going to go to? It's going to go to Miles. Miles just puts it straight on the boot as the siren's about to sound. The ball's in the air, off hands, bouncing, bouncing. No score. And that's the end of the third quarter here at TIO Stadium. You're watching rating TIO NTFL Premier's Waratah taking on the Central Australian Football League, broadcasting live from TIO Stadium. Seven points in it. We'll be back shortly with you with the final quarter.
Waratah taking on the Central Australian Football League side. Seven points into it. Wasn't like that at half time, but it was a great third quarter there for Central Australia as we get the ball going now. Askew versus Miles back in the back in the middle as we come away. And then Barty who kicked an absolute bomb in that third quarter to stir up his teammates. The, the Capital team and they're bouncing forward and they're going to run it forward to finish off this game here at TIO Stadium. Looking for to, to uh, put some, apply some early scoreboard pressure. There's just seven points in it. Loose on the ground. The ball comes out. We could be bouncing clear. It's a two on two. Wiley puts pressure on his Tar's opponent, then scoops it up with a handball over to Woodbury, which was pretty to watch. Woodbury gets tackled, keeps his feet, tries to get a handball away and does. Woodbury, uh, Wiley it was grabbed and brought down to the ground. Doesn't have an opportunity to get rid of it. The ball will be thrown up right on the 50 metre arc. Left forward pocket. Michael Long end. Quick predictions. Nick. I think Central are going to come back in the swap. Kieran. I think Waratah might hang on here. All right. Uh, so I'm the decider. Yeah. I'm going to go with Caffel. I think Caffel's probably uh, got a little bit of momentum going. We'll see. If they score from this play, but uh, I'm going to go with Caffel. I think that they've made a couple of changes. One of them was Maddie Campbell going on to Dwayne Karanura, which I thought was a great move in that third quarter. Askew brought it down. Now they've got some runners. Let's see what they can do from here. The Central Australians. Made up, couldn't quite get it away. Burrowing in is uh, Cree. Handball back, there's Anchors. And now there's Campbell. Bit of experience. Campbell, he's opened up, he's got. He's found Barty. Barty gives it off to the runner, Wiley. Wiley then balks and gets onto his right foot. It's not a great kick. Karanua, that's Timmy Karanua, couldn't quite grab it first time. Handball back there. Well, that's a throw. And he's been pinged. Well, you can throw the ball, but you shouldn't do it when the umpire's five metres away. Especially over half above your head. That sort of, sort of gives that away. But it's chaos football, though, for Central Australia, isn't it? They're not messing around at all. It's just, let's get that ball any way we can and get rid of it as quickly as we can. Anchors. Well, Anchors and Savalos just put it up in front of Abe Anchors, who, by the way, has kicked three goals. And he's kicked three of Central Australia's four goals. One in the second, and then two in the third with an opportunity to get him back to within one point. Where, where's he going to have to start this, left or right? Yeah, I think he's going to have to start this left or right. Good call, Kieran. Good pick up. He's going to have to give it a bit of height as well so it can actually drift. He goes in a little bit low and keeps it low, and I reckon it might have snuck over. Look at that. It, it has. It's back to a one-point ball game here at TIO Stadium. Anchors gets his fourth. One point in it. We didn't think this was going to happen about halfway through the third quarter. Also, just Clancy McCormick has just come off holding his uh, left hip. He was just helped off the ground. He's just sitting on the ground, just on the uh, near the interchange bench there. But uh, he just got a knock in that in that hectic tackle that was going on up the forward line there. But we're down to a one-point ball game. Seven goals, two forty-four to five goals, thirteen forty-three. They have looked really good since about the 10th minute mark of the third quarter has at Central Australia. And it's just got a bit hectic out there for Waratah. Kieran? Yeah, all the big guns in the middle for Caffel here. Braun, Anchors, Barty. And how do you how do you go defending against that sort of hectic play? Kieran, can you do it? I mean, is it possible? What do you do to, to, to manage that? Nah, it's, it's one of the hardest things in footy when you've got that much pressure coming at you. As anchors again, underground, but gee, it's picked up beautifully there by Damon. Damon can turn around and live of it, goal, and suddenly the Caffel have got two in a row. We did say about 11-minute uh, mark of that third quarter that definitely they had to get the next goal, um, Central Australia, and they've got the next couple. And they've got themselves in it now. They're five points in front. Well, for, Seven goals, 244 to 6, 13-49. So for the first time today, they've actually hit the lead. Yep. And they're five points up. All, all federal footballers kicked all the goals for the other team. Well, I think they had seven in the side, didn't they? Yeah, I think they got seven Barty and Anchors. Yeah, that Barty goal uh, is going to be memorised here. I'd suggest by the time he gets back to Alice, he was 65 metres out. Yeah, a bit more. <laughs> Might be uh, 70 by the time yeah. he drinks tonight. <laughs> Southern District Ruckman last year got one from 75 metres, I got told, and I'm pretty sure it was 55, but 75 when I heard him. <laughs> ah, Fat with a good handball. Here comes Anchors again. He's really lifted the boys in the middle, trying to get the hands away. Timothy Karanul picked up by Arata. Handball over the top. Clark is going to have to pick a bouncing ball up, and he does. Handball's over the top of his head. 
contest is still on. Oh, wrapped up beautifully there in the tackle. High tackle. Oh, was it high? Yeah. Well, he certainly held them up. Braden Wiley was the one there. Interesting now to see what Waratah do. They slow the ball down and just chip it around. They're really good at this. Playing their style of football, which has certainly been taken away from them for about the last 15 minutes or so. That's Cree. That's Cree on centre wing. Far side. He's got Will Clark in the middle. He might have to use him unless he wants to kick to a contest. He, st he stumbles and steps around the man on the mark and then kicks. Hoare is going to end up with it. That's Nick Hoare. He plays on, has a bounce, gets to the 50 metre line, then just sets it up in the middle. Kerenua went up over the back of Campbell, but he went up before acceptances. And Campbell just uh, having a bit of a smile because he's just got himself a free kick. So Matty Campbell moved from attack to defence and it's paid dividends. Kine and Kenny. He was pretty good in that third quarter as well when they needed the few players to stand up. It comes to Mater. Got Barty. Yeah, Barty. His confidence to be sky he might have a shot from here. No, he's actually fumbled it, gone overboard, and now he's looks like he's cramped up, which is a risk for the Caffle players. They're not used to playing in this sort of temperature at this time of the year. No, I was down in Central Australia earlier this week. It was about minus one degree at one stage, so they're certainly used to the colder weather at this time of year, but. Well, it's fallen, just taken out of the air. Oh, kick over the top. It's Timmy Karanua. Contest. Low. Couldn't quite get it. Cree hands and knees. Again. This time Cree. Right foot. It's going to be bounced. Coffee. Couldn't get it. Barty. Handball. Not great, but it's okay. They're going to get it up and under. Someone's got to contest. It's bounced. Miles. Anchors. Tries to shrug off one and Ken. Well, Woodbury's in there. He's going to take a chess mark. They've got some options. He's going to have to get it on quickly. He does. This is Abbott. Kurt Abbott plays on. Just puts it on the boot. It's going to fall short, though. Didn't have a lot to kick to there. No, Tars defenders are all over it. And Spence goes out wide. Hoare, he's got some open space. Campbell's got to get across in front of him, but that leaves open Karanua. The They're bouncing out. ball. They're out here. Yeah, Karanua. Karanua can go in, run in all the way if he wants, and he does. He sets it up across the top. Makes no mistake, the youngster. Well, he's kicked three, and that was probably the best of the three. Yeah, they're out over the back there. He had a, the full four was loose for it as well. He had topped it over the top to him, but he... Um, Decided against it, went for it all the way himself. That's just said, he's kicked his third goal. And that's put them back in front, Wanderers, by one point. You're a defender, Kieran. Matty Campbell, every defender's nightmare, isn't it? Yeah. You're caught between two. Yeah, he had to cheat the right thing. He had to choose, go up and press the play. But, you know, Kieran Newer probably kicked that a thousand times in his life from that pocket. Well, it was a top quality goal. He did have a lead on there, but he ignored him. He just decided to go for it himself and backed himself. That's good. They've worked, worked Wonders on the bench again. Clancy McCormick has just come back out of the ground, moving pretty freely. So then whatever they did, that worked. Uh, Fat, Askew. Askew got it down to himself and then got wrapped up, being given every opportunity to get rid of it before the umpire comes in to ball it up. On the ground. And again, let's have another bowl up. Three in a row. 50 plays, 49. Nine minutes gone. It's just a one-point ball game. Rotars went back in front. Trouble for them now, though, as they go forward. And there's the Wiley. Oh. Wiley bounced off his chest. Marking interference, though. Gee, they're lucky to get away with that. Waratah have dropped an extra player back into uh, defence. They've got a sweeper running around. They can try and move it forward. It's McHenry out wide. Big long to a contest. Hoare tapped down in front of him. Handball over the top. Cree beats one. Here they go. 
reached in kick. Askew pushed away. Kerenua and they spoil each other. In goes Campbell, just picks it up. This is how it's done, boys. And runs it out, finds Coffee. Is it Coffee? No, it's actually our fat, the Ruckman. Dangerous kick. It was a two on one. They managed to get it down though. Arata got caught. Handball out. Anchors. Penetrating kick to the 50. And forces the ball out of bounds. That's Which a win for the Caffle. I would think so. That's great field position, and it is a win. Now they're a chance from here. Eight goals, two, play 6 13. 19 scoring shots to 10. Just one point the difference. Nine and bounced. Eight. Here we go. The Caffle inside out, right foot. Scores a level. We're all tied up with just under nine minutes left to go in the game. We're tied up at 50 points apiece. But it's 6-14 to eight goals too. So kicking certainly been the difference for Waratah as they come out of defence now. They can hold their heads high, these Caffle players, because they've really given it everything here in the second half. Loose over the top. Carroll got taken high in the first instance. Play on is the call. Low. Went to handball, then decided to go out of bounds, and the ball will be thrown in. Still, it's a good outcome for, Warwick, uh, for the uh, Caffle side. About eight and a half minutes to go. There is plenty of football left in this game. Scores are tied up, 50 all. Not a great throw in, bit flat. Oh, McHenry is wrapped up. Still held, play on is the call. In fact, he's been pinged for holding the ball. It was a great tackle there. Back in board, but I don't know who it was to. Morris, he's been a bit quiet in the last few minutes. Got taken high over the shoulder. Yeah, Nader, I think that first contact was the one that was high. Morris. Oh, punched away beautifully. Well, Kenny, just doing the job there on Brody Carroll, not an easy thing, Kieran. Yeah, he's played really well today, Kenny, but yeah, I just said someone's got to stand Carroll because he's probably their man here to get the ball going forward. Yeah, he is definitely one of Waratah's danger man. I see Ed Morris is just drifting himself down inside the 50, but Ankers is going with him. Kenner, he's been useful when he has gone into the ruck, and this time he just smashes it forward. Hoare can't get it. And the ball is still out, as was in, and now it's out. Well, you just sense a little bit of danger here for the Capital side. They've worked it forward, Waratah's. Right on that 50 metre arc. Kenner, he won it cleanly before, and then he's won it again. They can't quite get clean possession. Now it's handballed away. McHenry, go, uh, not McHenry, Booth. They'll get it out of there, but it's just going to be high up and under. Coffee couldn't get two hands on it. Booth can, though. It's come to Brody Carroll, to Cree, over to Morris, who's free, low, balked, and then handballed up in the air. Under pressure, a ratter. Play on is the call. Let go. Gee, there's some bodies on body out there. McHenry with a handball over the top. Can't get it. One-handed slap on. Play on is the call, but it's going to be marked on the line. And it's Griffin, the Griffin that's come all the way down. Oh, well, the danger here is 4-1 here. Oh, Will Clark just got wrapped up Dave. by Dave Ankers then. That was great. And he's been paid a free kick for the effort. Four to one was against him then. The only thing he could do was take that one, and he did it extremely well. And the get out of jail there. Scores are tied up. As uh, Abbott, oh, again, just waiting for it to get to him, but was uh, Blitner. Danger here. Abbott's got to do all the work to get back in front of Brody Carroll, he does, held without the ball. No one wants to pay it. And the ball will be thrown in. Well, I don't know, Kieran, what you thought there, but I thought Abbott got dragged off it. Yeah, I think the umpires might be too far away to see that. Ah, fat. 
in a contest. This is Carroll. He gets drove, driven in the back. Play on is the call again. Picked up by Campbell. Just get it out of there. Don't where it lands. It's come to Turner. Well, can they build something from here? Still plenty of time left on the clock. Just want to get it out of their danger zone. It's a short pass to Damon. Good possession. Here we go. Damon, Eli Damon sends it up forward. Oh, it's loose off the ground there. Hurried kick up, anchors high and under. Where's Woodbury? He's there to cause a contest. Karanua gets it, turns back inside. Has to shoulder off one, then gets a kick away. But it's come straight to Barty. So Robbie Barty. If he's 75 metres out, he's going to go back in board, and he picks out Bradley Turner. Turner, if he looks to his left here, has got coffee, but it goes back to Barty. Short pass over the top. There's Hoare. So Hoare for Waratahs. If Barty looks across to his left there, he had coffee coming down. Now they're just going to play it back. Anchors standing the mark there, right back pocket. Oh, oh the kick's gone out of bounds on the full. Get the well, mark on. What are we seeing there, Kieran? Are we seeing a little the skill errors, fatigue of Waratahs? Just late in the game. Yep. And someone's got it here for a set shot. And whose hands is it in? Dylan Alice. Well. Every set shot now is really, really important as we're coming down to just under four minutes left in this game. Any score matters. So let's just say, I see Adrian McAdam on the sideline there asking his, asking his defenders to set up a line across half forward to lock it in as Dylan Ellis comes in. Gee, not a bad looking kick. Goes across the face of the goal and through for a point and Caff will get back in front. It's a one point lead now, eight goals, 250 to 6.15, 51 as we're coming up to the 17th minute mark. Remember, no time on. So an even 20 minutes here in the fourth quarter. Morris, short pass recipient. Anchors on the, the mark. He got his in short and he's picked out. A teammate in Arata. Arata doesn't have a lot, but he can go sideways there to the boundary line. Ignores that and goes up the line looking for Kenner. Campbell's there. It's knocked over the top. Kerenua tries it with one hand. Can't get on. Play on is the call. Comes back out. Hurry kick. It's going to bounce. No. Taken cleanly. Spence looks up. Plays on now. Coming out is Askew. Can't get clean hands away. It's picked up, though, by Booth. Ooh, missed everything. He's missed everything out of bounds on the full. Needed that one. They did. 17 and a half minutes gone here at TIO Stadium. One-point ball game. I don't know that Matty Campbell's in a hurry to get that ball. No. <laughs> With no time, on if he could get, make it last two and a half minutes, I think he would. <laughs> that boy's talking to him, though. Right about now, he needs a spectator to pick that ball up and kick it over to the airport. As Matty Campbell comes up, sends it long up the line. Hoare sets himself off his hands. Abe Ankers is in there. They just need to bottle it up here. Miles, hurried hands, anchors, can't do anything with it. What do you think, Kieran? How's your tip, how's your tip looking? Tar still? I think if the ball goes Tar's way, I think they'll lock it in and kick one. All right. Look for Carroll here. Who's in the ruck? We've got Kenner. He's actually been quite dominant whenever he's had to go in there, and he's won it out again. Anchors got it, though. Handball out wide. Gee, that was nice. And it's going to go out of bounds on the full. Well, that's unlucky for Driffin because he deserves a little bit better than that. Comes in long. Campbell's there waiting for it. Got his hands on it. Then interfered with. Now it's a bouncing ball. Morris, this is danger. Campbell put him under pressure. The ball goes up and under. Barty's in there with body. And a free kick's been found. There's a hold off the ball. We need and, to do that. And it's going to go to Don Booth. No. I didn't see that one. Well, what happened there? Well, apparently, he indicated there was some sort of marking infringement by the signal, which means Booth, or is it Booth, that was interfered with then? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Dom Booth. He will go back and have a shot at goal. The game on his boot. He has. There's no pressure, Dom. At all. 51 plays 50. I can hear the Centralian 
supporters now saying this is a hometown decision as Booth puts it through. Suddenly, they're five points up and there is 10 seconds to go. <laughs> and the clock doesn't stop. There's no time on. Seven points, the difference. Oh, sorry. Hang on, what's going on there? Why did that score wrong? Five points, the difference now. And it was... That scoreboard yeah. doesn't look right Nine, to me. 9.256 to 6.15.51. So it's five point win. And Waratah's win by win. Waratah win by win. I don't know about you guys, but my vote is that this sort of game continues every year. I really enjoy that at the end of Centralia. Certainly got back in there in the second half. Uh, your best on ground, Ash? Uh, very difficult. I, I, yeah, very difficult for me because uh, they were patchy players. But I think Morris, I think Brody Carroll. Um, I actually thought uh, the, the boy Kenner uh, in the ruck did a good job as well. But uh, Will Clark was another one. Kieran, I think yeah. that he got a fair bit of it. And then, and for the Capital boys, um, I don't think you can go past A Bankers. I thought Matty Campbell showed his experience. Um, and I thought that uh, uh, the other boy, um, uh, Coffee. And I also thought that uh, Vardy in the second half came into his own. And yourself, Kieran? Yeah, I had uh, Brody Carroll up there, best on, as well as Abe Ankers kicked the four goals, which is pretty instrumental. So the goal kickers for Waratah, Kieran Harris got th uh, three, Brody Carroll got a couple of important ones, Nick Hall got one, Xavier Blitter got one, Best with one, and then of course Booth is the one you'll we'll talk about for a while tonight, kicking the winning goal of Siren, Akers with four, uh, David with one, and the goal of the season, I'm going to call it, Robbie Bardem, he kicked that one already, so uh, it's going to be a big year next season for the moment, that's the one to chase for goal of the season, but thanks guys, it's been great to have you with us, thanks for joining us this afternoon, as the reigning TA Premiers, Waratah were five five-point winners taking on Central Australian Football League side. It's been a pleasure to host you today. My name is Nick Dax. I was joined by Ashley Manakaris and Kieran Parnell. We'll be back with you in around 17 weeks for the start of the 23-24 TO NTFL season. Catch you then. Go see AFL, not Capital, South Coral League. Just say Central Australian Football, Football League. League, yeah. I don't mind doing that. No, oh, the captain who plays for the Tars. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the captain of Capital plays for the Tars, that's him. Oh, but he's, yeah. play, he's, he's this today. Okay, Barfoot, because he's Capital. Yeah. Amy's in the camera shot. Yeah. And she'll oh. say... Yeah, that's a couple of my right shoulders. 
Thank you so much to all the family, friends and footy fans that came out early for the curtain raiser here. The Tars getting up over the Central Australian Football League. Uh, as a part of this today, we're going to have a best on ground announcement uh, as determined by the umpires. Close call, great game, came down to the wire. But the winner of our best on ground medal for the curtain raiser here before the AFL. Please put your hands together and congratulate number two from the Central Australian Football League. It's Abe Ankers. Abraham, our best on ground. Tar's giving him a rig clap as well, which is good to see, yes? Congratulations, best on ground for that game, fantastic. Hey, Darwin, let's put our hands together. What a curtain raiser, that was fantastic. Coming down to the wire there with that last goal. We are gonna get the uh, coaches of each of the side to come on over and say a couple of words. So maybe Central Australian Football League, if you wanna, if your coach would like to come over and say a couple of words as a coach, Central Australian Football League, no? Nope. Maddie, come on over, Maddie. How you going, mate? Maddie, uh, <laughs> you've been put on the spot, mate, but a couple of words about the game and about everyone played? Uh, yeah, obviously, a um, great contest. Um, thanks to the Waratahs Footy Club and Airsy for getting a team together to give us uh, our rep game. So it's good to see our colours back and our lads back out here. We've enjoyed it. And uh, nice to be up in Darwin, yeah, having a good time while you're here? Yeah, Wireless Springs is cold, it is. <laughs> get out of the cold, get into the warmth, have a good run. And uh, how did the boys go today? Pretty proud of them? Oh, very proud. You know, we had a good crack there. Waratahs are a class outfit and, you know, their running game in that first half really blew us up. But for us to respond and get it that close and make it a contest was good. On your Alice Springs. Well done, Central Australian Football League. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, Coach Taz, how you going? Yeah, good. How are you feeling after that win? Yeah, it was a close contest, which is always expected, I guess. So, you know, really good opportunity for Central to come up here and put on a show for us as well. Were you nervous in that last quarter? Yeah, for sure. Obviously, um, we took the lead early on, but for them to come at us and then hit the lead, um, but for our boys to respond was really good. And uh, excited for, uh, for next season with these boys? Are they looking good uh, in, in all of this at the moment? Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, we had six of the under-18 boys out here who won the premiership last year as well. So to give them an opportunity and a bit of exposure, the footy club's in a good place with them going forward. Fantastic. Well done to the, uh, the Waratahs. Congratulations on that win. Close work. And everyone, if you wouldn't mind, one more time, put your hands together. Central Australian Football League and the Waratahs for that awesome curtain raiser. Well done, everybody. Ready. All right. Stick around, friends. We're going to get ready for our AFL show here at the TIO Stadium. We've got the Gold Coast Suns taking on the Adelaide Crows. Make a bu bunch of noise for your team. We're going to have a great time here, part of the dry season at TIO Stadium. <laughs> 